Looking for a better way to preview, arrange, and manage your print files with a Canon wide format printer? We'll show you how to do it with a free download application called Direct Print and Share from Canon. The beauty of this software, one of them, is that it has everything on one screen. So I can see a list of files over here on the left. I can switch a preview view so I can see either a list of files or thumbnails. I can see here that I'm getting a preview with my layout, exactly how this print is going to lay out on the roll of paper here. You could see that I could flip or switch between numerous printers. So, Like Ed said, it's not just a, a tool for technical printers, but we can also print on our graphics printers as well. Very easy to add a printer. And in fact, this software is available on the Canon website where all our drivers and downloads are at. So if I wanted to add a printer, I simply click on the Add Delete Printer to Use. And then you see here I have a dialog that pops up. And I can see the three printers that I already have. If I want to add another printer, I simply click the Add button. And then the next window would pop up showing any other printers that I have loaded on my control panel for active printers. So a huge advantage here of being able to switch between printers on the fly and stage a job prior to my printing so I can see that the job will come out without any errors. You can see over here on the right that I have a paper source window, media type window. These are all shortcuts to what the actual Windows driver is being set to currently. I navigate back down here to the bottom. I can see that I have a print history button. I can actually launch accounting manager directly from here. I can create a shortcut print. I can also access my presets. So we're going to be going through each one of those buttons and I'm going to give you an overview of basically how you can add a file first and then build a job very easily without errors. Well, the first thing over here, you can see I've staged quite a few files over here to begin with. You can see here that the original page size is set to those. I'm going to switch my view now to thumbnail. So when I do that, you'll be able to see over here quickly that I have a number of files. And I can switch back and forth from either a list or thumbnail view. So one big advantage is when I'm looking at a multi-page PDF file, I can see the multiple pages here showing up. And you can see by this thumbnail that this is a void and I don't want to print that file. So I simply would uncheck that file in my process. As I scroll down, you can see the rest of them that I've selected. Again, very easy to pre-select the files on the fly. So I'm going to switch back to list. And again, let's go through the process now of adding a file. There are really three ways I can add a file. I'm over here to click the add button. And I get a quick pop-up navigating to my Windows folder that I had just opened previously. So it's a very easy way to grab a file highlight it or multiple files and click open. As you can see in this window, these are the file types that I can add. So a big advantage here, I can grab a PDF, TIFF, JPEG, or an HPGL2, which is a, a print ready file that was created in an AutoCAD application. I can grab those files and use the same previewer and the same batch printing utility to print all those file types. Many of us know that when I print a JPEG or a TIFF, I'm going to get a different view 
or a different application to launch when I'm going to print those files. And my output could be inconsistent. This is going to give me consistent output every time. Another way to add files is to simply just grab the file and drop it into this little registered file area. But when I click that, I can just drag and drop those files right over here from any Windows window. Okay, so in this example, you can see that I've got a JPEG selected and it happens to be uh, a nice looking photograph. Well, if I jump down here to my preset, you can see here that I have a number of presets already created. So what's really cool about this is I can go ahead and say, you know, I want a 24 inch borderless on Pro Luster. I'll select that and apply that. I hit the button, it's gonna take a second or two to refresh my screen and pay no attention to the not responding. It actually is responding. <laughs> we'll give it a second here while this refreshes and then I'll be able to see real quickly how this window is going to change. So right now, you can see that I've got an image, I'm gonna tag it, and that's the image it's going to print. Over here on the right, if I wanted multiple prints, I could just type in another number. So you can see this entire list here, the only file I'm actually going to print is this image right here that I've highlighted. And I can send it out to the printer, and away we go. And also switch my layout to just viewing content here. So as I navigate through this list of different files to print, I can create a different set of jobs quite easily. So for example, if I want to print now on a 30 inch roll of paper, I can switch real quickly to a preset that was already created for that with all of my settings. So if you look inside of this window, pretty self-explanatory, I can see which printer the preset was created for, that it's going to accept a PDF, JPEG, or TIFF. I'm going to use roll one, which is my plain paper roll of 30 inch width. And then some of the other driver settings are set here as well. They're all part of that preset. I could click apply, and then that preset is simply going to set up my job. Again, so no errors. When I go and hit the print button over here on the bottom, away we go. So again, really versatile tool to use when I'm going through and selecting jobs. Uh, another thing I can do is create a shortcut. So the shortcut is going to be the icon, an icon on the desktop that will allow me to just drag and drop a file. I'll show you how that'll work. I'm going to go ahead and select a preset first. And let's just fit one here for a fast D size sheet on 20 pound bond. We'll grab that. And as that's populating, we're going to go ahead and get ready to create our shortcut. So that'll take another second here. As that's happening, one of the other things we can talk about is using this for untrained operators or casual use. By creating the presets, I'm allowing people that really haven't spent a lot of time printing uh, easier way to print. So now I'm going to select that shortcut print and it pops up this dialog. So it's asking, do I want to create a shortcut print on the desktop or do I want to create one that's going to be listed in the startup menu? I'll click next and then it allows me to go ahead and name that shortcut. So for example, I'll probably name it the same thing that my preset is set to, fast D size. Hit save, and now it simply is going to pop that up on the desktop. Minimize that, and you can see over here, very bottom on this screen, 
I have the fast D size. Again, simply drag and drop my PDF file, TIFF or JPEG file right on that icon and the printer will begin to print. So I can also print from history. So if I've had a number of jobs during the day that I printed and I wanna reprint a job, open up the print from history dialog and anything that I've printed for the history that I've created here, whether it be one week or up to three months is gonna show up in a list. I can highlight that job, apply it and then reprint it. Last but not least, we have cloud integration. Cloud integration is super important right now because people are working remotely. Uh, we want to be able to share documents and share information across the cloud without utilizing email and the limitations that email has. In order to integrate with cloud, all I do is click on the cloud integration button. And you can see here every document that I have pre-selected over here, or actually lined up in my registered file list, is already preloaded, ready to upload to whatever cloud storage tool I'm using. Numerous cloud storage uh, tools are available. Simply click on the settings button here, cloud settings, and you can see here that I can add a cloud storage setting that would be a web DAV enabled storage. So I can name it and then just cut and paste the URL from that website that I'm sending it up to. I would just log in then, and once I've logged in, I would be able to see everything that is listed in my cloud storage tool. As you can see, there's a lot you can do with Canon's direct print and share software. It's a very powerful application, and the best part, it's free. Please like and subscribe to stay in the loop for upcoming tips and tricks. And until next time, take care.